the studio, didn't, I didn't have anything. Um, and I had to put it together to do a show and we managed to do it, but you know, after the show I was kind of dead, I didn't sleep for weeks. So, yeah. Well, they give you a little bit of money and then no. you just have to do the, I think they give like, my first show was like two and a half thousand right. um, and I had to include models, um, clothes, shoes, everything, so it was, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like made doing men, but we made everything from scratch and um, I just got a little team together of good people who wanted to do as much as I did, so I think that was kind of fun. And um, was this the show that then led to designing for Kylie? Yeah, I previously met when I was doing in the year between working, so between the year between leaving college and doing my first show, um, I did a few odd jobs for various people, Judy Blair, the right. jewellery design and styles. One of them was sharing a studio with William Baker at the time and he introduced me to William Baker. Kylie and Styles, and yeah. And then he got me in after the show to make costumes for all of the dancers and for Kylie. And yeah, it was kind of, again, it was like a, I just happened to see Judy walking through Lesser Spell one night when he was, when he was drunk and I was drunk. And he was like, oh, I'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> um, and then he got me to go in and show William his my portfolio. And, you know, it's happy accident. So it's I'm lucky with regard to that. Right. Did, did you actually make any money out of deciding for Kylie? Um, a bit, you know, it kind of helped pay for um, some fabrics for next show. It wasn't like mega money though, you know. But it sounds like very sort of hand to mouth existence, you know, like but lurching from one sort of happy event it to is, another. It is, it's a little bit like, um, you know, it, it's very much like that, but it's not like, that's not, a, I, I would never say that was a negative part of it. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of a test of will, I guess, it's how much do you want it. Um, and uh, I think a lot of people um, don't realise how difficult trying to make things like that work is. So it was, um, yeah, it, it's not like a sob story though, it was fun. <laughs> but do you, feel, do you feel that the kind of person that you're, the more challenges you've been thrown up, the more you're determined to, to succeed? Yeah, you just have to make it work. You know, you've got um, a set of parameters, whether that be money or you, know, you just got a problem. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of what design is about is about problem solving. You know, you've got an idea, but it's like how do you get from A to B? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's just, it's like an obstacle course trying to find your way through to the end. And, yeah, it's a <laughs> it's a fun thing, you know. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> Now, if we move on, I think it was 2005 was the um, No Ideas collection. Yeah. The one that Anna Winter saw. Um, yeah. I think that was probably a kind of turning point in a way for you. Because mm. with Anna Winter in the front row, I think usually for most designers, it's a kind of guarantee that you are going to be noticed, you know, on a kind of major scale. Yeah, it was, well, it was my, it was, it's a funny thing actually. It was my first solo show. Um, I've done two shows with Fashion East previously, and then. I got a new generation. Right. I was able to kind of do my. So I was working towards my first show on my own. Um, and then I got called to go and see Alexander Shulman at the British Folk to kind of. I think they were kind of sussing out who to tell Anna to go. Right. Who shows to go to. So she asked me to come in and kind of explain the inspiration for my show. Right. I've never done it before. So you know, what were you saying? Well, you know, it's, it's kind of, I mean... Because like, what, I don't know, there's no photographs, but the, some of the new models sort of thought they'd be like giant ears, weren't they? Yeah, Topiary like, things. It's like a big poodle. Yes, thing. poodle. Poodle head pieces. But it was, you know, I'd never been for like a, a pre-scene with an editor of Vogue. Right. Um, I didn't know that normally people would turn up with a rock of clothes and a model and talk them through the collection, so I turned up with a... Kind of strong ball and a, <laughs> and a tank packet of Benson hedges because that was kind of in a nutshell what my collection was about. It was kind of about black and gold and about waltzes and fairgrounds and there's a lot of strong ball drunken fairs and there's a lot of smoky Benson hedges. So I thought it was I thought it was the perfect abstraction. The kind of, of sort of carnival. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. 
So, uh, it, I'm, I'm not sure if it went down so well with Alexander Schumann, but I know when to end up comments, so maybe it was, was a good thing. But Anna came to the show anyway. Did yeah. you meet her? Yeah, she, she came back to before the show. Um, which, what did she say? Um, she, I don't know, I can't remember. It was such a, just an hour run through, and I was so stressed, and I just all of a sudden was confronted with Anna Winter, Anna Winter and it's like, what do you say to that? So, did you say, would you like um, to oh, no, no, This is the terrible thing I remember with just now run through and I had the giant poodle head in one arm and I had my DJ had given me a, um, he had just done the music, he had given me a half a kind of Stella. So I walked backstage and I, I couldn't shake a hand because I, it was, it was hideous. Are you sure you weren't wearing a wife beater vest as well? Probably. <laughs> But she came back subsequently, so I must have, yeah, I must have been... Mm. No, she did speak oh, you know, quite warmly of your design. Yes, yeah, I think she gets it. Yeah. yeah. And I think she is, um, for all her power and influence, she is something who really does yeah. um, support and help you know, young designers. Exactly. So you carried on showing in London Fashion Week for a few more seasons. How did the business kind of then develop with Rick Owens? Because you now owns what? 49% or something? Well, it's basically, it's split, you know, it's kind of the factory who both he and I work with um, did a lot of work, um, as did I do a lot of work with them, um, kind of gratis. Um, and then when I moved to Sean Paris, we kind of had to sign something that was a little bit more serious. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, I'm very much in that. Whole circle. It's a good kind of circle of support to have. A family. Um, yeah. We so. probably should explain the whole, sort of the whole Paris thing and winning the Andam Prize. Yeah. Because that's it's a bit like winning, um, you know, one of the British.